Hi there friends, it's Ashley Pfeiffer coming at you. I figured I'd do a quick video this week using the first frost bundle. I know that I had said that I wasn't feeling overly inspired, but inspiration struck tonight and I thought I should stop what I'm doing and just video it as I go along. So we're gonna fly by the seat of my pants like we usually do and uh, we're gonna get our craft on. So we are going to start with an A2 size card. It's going to be a top folding. We'll set that aside. We are going to be using kind of a monochrome uh, color scheme. And we are going to mix some bundles here. I'm going to use the stitched all around this beautiful die. And we'll cut this guy. And remember, if you are trying to save your plates, use it so that the die is facing up and cutting into your top plate instead of the bottom. Sorry for all the shaking that does. I hope you have all had a fabulous week. Just going to use my die brush to get all those itty bitty pieces out. With that one, I always do it over a garbage can because there's so many little pieces that come out. So we're done with that one. We are going to grab white embossing powder and our Versamark. Use our embossing buddy. Oh, actually we are not done with that. I wanted to use one of the sentiments from here that is I really have not used enough. It's very underrated and it's, oh darling, you are fabulous. So we'll try and line that up without being over top of it. Close enough. While I'm doing this, I would like to mention that if there is a specific technique or a suite that you would like to see me feature in one of my videos, please comment below or send me an email or message me on any of the social feeds that I am on. Sometimes it is hard to figure out what I'm gonna do that week, so I would love to have some input. And this week's Facebook Live, I left it up to the viewers and it was so much fun. I'm going to turn my heat tool on here. With our card base. And here is where the fun begins. So I have a frosted floral class coming up. And I wanted to use this strip of paper, but as you can see, I need at least that strip for the card that I'm going to do, and I just won't have enough. So I thought, why not make my own? So I'm going to take a strip here and we will grab our clear embossing powder, keep that Versamark out, and in this stamp set is this lovely piece. You can see it's all Versamarked. I actually just used it and didn't clean it properly. So use our embossing buddy again and if you don't have one of these they are highly underrated it took me a long time to get mine but i am in love so ink it up with versamark and just stagger it sometimes you're gonna have the stem sometimes you're gonna have the whole thing turn it So while we're letting that cool, you can see that this has some light areas and some darker areas. So when I first started doing this, I had it just all gray granite and then thought I should bring in some basic gray. But we will start with our gray granite and I am just using my sponge dauber and just 
ever so slightly start on your grid paper so that you don't get a big ugly circle on your Whisper White cardstock. And if you don't want to have these sponged edges, you can always trim that part off. Hold it down so that it doesn't bend on you. Those bends can be really hard to get out. Now, if you do end up with a dark spot, it's okay because that is going to be the look that we go for in the end. So if it just so happens to be with gray granite instead of basic gray, that is okay. You could use any color you want. You're basically making your own DSP here. So our final step for this paper is going to be some champagne mist shimmer paint mixed with rubbing alcohol. Since frosted floral has a frost to it, I figured this would be nice. And champagne mist, quite honestly, is my favorite. I've gone through a lot of the white, but I love this. Okay, so we're just going to have that kind of off to the side there. And now for a little fun, because that hasn't been fun at all, right? So we are going to take this and our gray granite, just to bring it back in. And we are going to do a couple of flowers. Now, I think I will bring in some Sahara sand too. These are going to be very neutral looking flowers. I will stamp a few of each. Isn't that pretty? I think we'll do some crumb cake too. I know you don't often see brown flowers, but there's the first for everything. Those are so pretty. These flowers are just, oh, so pretty. So we'll leave some room for some smaller ones. And I think for the smaller ones, we'll do Sahara sand, just so that they kind of add a little bit My pads need to be re-inked. There we go. Loving it. And for one more little touch, we've got some thistles here. Just grab one more scrap of paper. I could probably fit them in there, but that seems like too much work. So let's do this. You could definitely do an ombre effect with these. We're just going to keep it simple. And now let's go back to the big shot. Stampin' Up! is getting really considerate and doing multiples. So there is, we're not gonna use those two. We will use crumb cake and gray granite. Some washi. So like I was saying, they're getting very considerate and having multiples. So we can cut 
three, two of these in one pass, just as long as the dies don't touch. Right now, I wish I had more of those, but I don't. I'm just going to rejig so that we can get the big shot over here. Always need to stand up to make sure that everything is just in the shot for you. I thought about putting it right in the middle, but I don't think I like it. <laughs> I want an offset look. So it could go on either side. You could go in the middle, so you're not covering up as much. And we're just going to layer. So you can have it in that corner and this corner. You can have it both in the upper. You can do them both up here kind of a lot going on. I would suggest having one vellum and one of the galvanized so that you don't have too much going on up there. And you can always take a piece off. It doesn't want to play nice. And then I would put a flower up there to cover that. You can do a couple of little ones. You can do another one down here. Something like that. And then stick a few thistles probably up here. You could have one down here as well. The more that I look at this, the more I don't like having the crumb cake and in the rose and the thistle up there. And I'm kind of liking that, so I think I'm going to move it down just a smidge and then let's glue this all down. Now what you could have done, and what I probably should have done in hindsight, was use the adhesive sheets for this. And then they basically become a sticker. but I am fairly new to adhesive sheets and I forget that I have them. So while I'm gluing the next one, I will just put a block on this so that it sets. Repeat the process. Just putting it in a few strategic spots. I've just realized I put them kind of in the wrong way. Take that little guy off. Snip this guy. Put our block on there again. We're gonna mount this on dimensionals. Putting one in each corner and one in the middle. Okay, and then next, our thistles.
Who would have ever thought that thistles would be pretty? I just think of them as a weed. Trying to go in the power of threes. Whoops, dimensional in the way. If that happens, just cut off part of it so you can still put the piece where you want without interference. We won't use that fourth one. You can always keep it in your stamp case so that you can use it another time. So I don't want the crumb cake one up there. I want the gray granite. Put a little bit of glue on there. Put a little piece of a dimensional on the upper portion. We'll put a dimensional on the back of that one as well so it doesn't get stuck down there. So we can use mini dimensionals for those. Beautiful, isn't it? You could definitely put something down here if you wanted. I want to leave it just like that. Now, you know that most of my cards are not complete unless they have one thing. Can you guess what it is? Did you guess that? I love me some metallic thread. And I could use gold or copper but I'm gonna stick with my gray silvery theme. And grabbing a glue dot. that on there. Trim off your ends before you put it in. It is not fun having to cut it when it's underneath and the end is sticking out. Ask me how I know. As I was pulling that, I thought maybe it would look better up at the top, but no, I want something to anchor it down there. So I think that's it. I lied. One more. Let's use a little rhinestone right in there. I'm gonna pull that off because I want to color it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just taking my dark crumb cake. And that one may not work, but if we color, remembering that multiples of threes, let's just pop that down there.
and right here. And one more up here. Up there. So that's it. I hope you love it as much as I do. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would strongly encourage you to do that. I have a new video each and every week. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. It helps more people find me and start watching my videos and subscribing. So I would really appreciate that. And like I said earlier, if you have any suggestions for videos or um, techniques that you'd like me to show, then please just comment below and I would be happy to do that. Thank you so much for joining me, friends. Bye!